the Johnny Bumpus Pat Jefferson fight and it should be a good one but let's talk a little bit about Bumpus because he was involved in a boxing experiment in his last fight what happened was he moved up a class to the junior welterweights and fought a very tough Pat Hallisey uh, the welterweight class I should correct myself and he fought Pat Hallisey now the question is was it worth it to move up to a heavier class and fight Hallisey and what did it prove we talked to him uh, well the fight with Hallisey was more or less a test uh, to see whether I could handle the 147 pound division because as everybody knows that Sugar Ray Leonard has retired and that uh, opens up a lot of doors in the welterweight division. And uh, the fight itself, I felt very comfortable in there. Uh, Halsey, he didn't seem much stronger than me. His punching power was as adequate as mine. Uh, after the fight, it was... Uh, so you felt comfortable? Right, I felt very comfortable. He didn't, like I said, he didn't feel very much bigger than me. And I feel that in time, I will be a welterweight. So it's nice to know that you can fight either a junior welterweight or a welterweight, because both those classes, particularly the welterweight, is going to be a very interesting situation now that Leonard is retired. So you've got to be looking at that. You've got to feel like there's a place there for you. Right. Uh, my plans are to win the junior welterweight first and then move up to the welterweight, providing my body grows into a welterweight. Let's talk about the junior welterweight. The fact that Aaron Pryor has the title, you are second ranked. How do you see that situation? How do you feel about that situation and where you are in the ratings? Well, I feel that uh, I can take Pryor. Uh, if he was to fight me like he fought uh, Aguero from the outside, that would be picture perfect, just how we would you know, have it ordered. But unfortunately, I don't believe he would fight me that way because he knows in his mind that I'm a better boxer than he is. He's a better slugger. And uh, I think my defense would uh, credit me to landing a lot more shots when he tries to come in during that Marlin ball. You don't see a fight with Haley? Well, uh, I'm closer to a title shot with Pryor than with Haley. That's the only reason. I think that Haley would be a very, a lot more easier fight than Pryor, but I have to take it as it comes. Has anybody said to you, Johnny, that maybe it's too soon to fight somebody like Pryor? Uh, yes. We have a lot of people that, you know, criticize, and I feel that my ability is far greater than prior, so I just have to look over what they think and do what's best for myself. I feel that if I could fight Leroy Haley next weekend, that I would be the uh, champion. Uh, prior would take a lot more. I feel that a couple more good ten rounders and prior would be one of my victims. I've got all the basics down and some. I'm just learning a few new tricks like, uh, say for instance, how to carry your hand low and, and uh, counter punching and stuff like that. But as far as all the boxing moves, I know them. I'm just trying to add to my game. Are you surprised by your progress, by your celebrity at this point? Yes, I'm very surprised. Uh, I thought it would take me a, a lot longer time to climb the ladder as, as I have. And uh, I think that when I get there and become champion, I'll be a great champion. Johnny Pumphus, Pat Jefferson, the tail of the tape. Pumphus is very tall for a junior welterweight at six feet. Five feet nine is Jefferson. Jefferson a little bit heavier at 142 and a half to 140 and a half. But Pumphus has the reach accordingly by four inches. Age, 22 for Pumphus, 25 for Jefferson, both fighting two years as a pro. Johnny Bumpus, as you can see, is a southpaw. He will have the right hand extended. He'll jab with the right, hook with the right, and cross with the left hand. John, but Johnny Bumpus had this to say about his opponent tonight, Pat Jefferson. Well, Pat Jefferson, I don't know much about him other than he's a pretty good boxer. I look to just go in and take my time, not looking for the knockout. If it comes, it happens, although I'm not looking forward to going 10 rounds, and I feel that I will be victorious. And how does Pat Jefferson feel about Johnny Bumpus? And I figured that uh, this was an excellent shot and opportunity. 
I also know uh, Bumpus is a uh, career very good and amateurs we were uh, roommates but together teammates uh, on many international matches and uh, I think that uh, there's a few animosities and things that we uh, need to get cleared up now let's go up to our ring announcer Ed Darian ladies and gentlemen this next bout is scheduled for 10 rounds and it's in the junior welterweight division the judges, William Kostrov and John Stewart. Counting for the knockdown seconds, alternate referee Frank Cappuccino. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round junior welterweight bout, referee Joe Cortez. And our boxing fans, introducing the principals. First in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the green trim, he is weighing in at 142 and one half pounds. This gentleman hails from Rapid City, South Dakota. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Pat Lightfoot Jefferson. Jefferson. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with the white and blue trim. He is weighing in at 140 and one half pounds. This young man is a native of Tacoma, Washington, and now residing in Clementon, New Jersey. Boxing fans, here is Johnny from City Bumpus. Bumpus. Uh, fellas, you both know the rules of the New Jersey State Athletic Commission, and I'm here to enforce them. This is the when referee. I, say break, I want you both to break clean. If there's a knockdown, fighters scoring the knockdown must go to the father's neutral corner, and you stay there until I'll signal you out. Fighter going down must take the mandatory A count. The three knockdown rule has been waived. Watch your low punches, and your kidney punches, and your rabbit punches. I don't want any fouling, because I'll take a round away. Okay? Any questions? All right, protect yourselves at all times. Good luck. This is a 10-round bout. Junior Walderweights from the Resorts International Atlantic City. Presented by Main Event. It figures to be a good one again. I remind you, Tony Bumpus is a southpaw. He'll have that right hand in front. Pat Jefferson is the more orthodox type. He'll lead with the left hand. Jefferson in the white trunks. Bumpus in the red. In that interview, a punch there by Jefferson. Caught the body. Don, yes, Don. In that interview we just heard with Pat Jefferson, he said he used the word animosity, but really there's no animosity here. There's just a fierce competitiveness because they've been in the amateurs, they have wonderful amateur records, and this is the test of the difference between the boys and the men. As he's giving away a couple of inches in height, Pat Jefferson decides early to concentrate on the body. <laughs> there it goes again as he shoots it in there. <laughs> Bumpus always features that jab, which he sometimes turns into a right hook. It's a C, one, two, three jab there. Yep. The jab is very, very important. He has a great jab, but it's coming across with that left like he just did. That's the name of the game with the southpaws, to throw a quick left and a hard left, and he did then. <laughs> Well, again, I remind you, Jefferson is working the body. Referee Joe Cortez. A little hard to reach that six feet tall head of uh, Bumpus. And it was a little low. At that time. Jefferson is a crisp hitter. Very fast with his punches. Not quite as fast as Bumpus, though. Well, Bumpus has that long reach. He's Bumpus, got the height. Bumpus puts all the weight on his right foot. A little limber with the left. He's got that advantage, advantage of that tremendous reach and height, which is so important. Jefferson, a boxer, nevertheless, fights flat-footed most of the time. There's a little bobbing and weaving, and is a good counter-puncher. But you see, he's down on that right foot of his. He has to be flat-footed to be a good right-hand puncher, and he does throw a very effective right hand. There it goes again. Less than a minute to go in round one of a ten-rounder. Bumpus moving that head around as he moves in. Bumpus will not back up. He's, say he's the aggressor. He's moving in. But Jefferson stands his ground, as you said before. A nice good fight of it. 
The question is, can uh, Jefferson figure out how to stay away from that right jab? If he cannot, he'll lose. If he does, he's got a chance. Well, Jefferson did exactly what he's supposed to do then. He throws a very, very quick right hand with a southpaw. He's got to get on the inside. There he's tried it again, but he was too far out. He's uh, quick in that he throws the body and then gets out of there. Bumpus. Right Bumpus counterpunch. Bumpus threw a great combination and now Pat Jefferson's eyes a little red. We're in the final seconds of round one of a ten rounder. We spoke earlier with the managers of both fighters and here's their comments on tonight's fight. Well, uh, Johnny, you know, uh, what do you say about Johnny? He's uh, one of the best uh, ballet-type ring generals uh, in, in boxing today. He knows his way around the ring. He's not a devastating puncher, but he's a good enough puncher to stop you on cuts. He's very adroit, and he's dexterous. He moves good. He bobs and weaves. He thinks, and he is a very good puncher. As you probably noticed, Johnny Bumpus has a lot of Vaseline over the eyebrows. Not so Pat Jefferson. It's interesting to note, uh, Don, that Bumpus has a victory over Mancini in the amateurs, the present WBA champion. Uh-huh. You know, when uh, Bumpus crouches, which he's doing now, it makes uh, Jefferson just as tall as he is. Good solid shot, uh, catching Jefferson in motion. All right, Jefferson has to respect Bumpus now because he's being tagged repeatedly. And he is backing up a bit, which he had not been, done, been doing before. No, and he's not throwing those quick shots to the body either. Not Although he may, he waved the right hand there before he threw it. I don't know if that was a good gesture. Well, when you get respect for your opponent, you're, uh, you're not a very effective boxer. Bumpus isn't scoring with all those right jabs, although he's doing enough scoring with them, but he is keeping Jefferson off balance by shooting them out, and that's the important thing. And sooner or later, he's going to land a good left cross. Bumpus's jab is really has a telling effect. You can see now that his eye is getting a red, and it'll probably could open with that kind of a jab. They're not all landing, but when they do, they're sharp. Half the round is over. Again, Jefferson concentrates on the body. But that went into the jaw pretty good, though. Bump is back at him with that hard left hand for a change. One of the few left crosses that he's thrown. Jefferson ties him up on the inside, and Joe Cortez gets him out. Jefferson's eye now is a little swollen, and Bumpus is getting a little dirty. Less than a minute to go in the round. Both of these rounds have been very good for these junior welterweights. You notice whenever Jefferson starts to move in, he gets tagged, and that was a right hook that tagged him, a respecter. I would think that he'd have to get inside of Bumpus, Arthur, or he's going to get cut to ribbons with that right jab. Well, yeah, he started you... to get in there a moment ago, like there. Well, you and I know that's the style to beat him, but it's tough to get in with that jab. He keeps you on the outside. That's true. Keep your punches up, says the referee to uh, Pat Jefferson. Yeah, Pat's getting a little punch shy now. He's carrying that left of his a little low and he's getting tagged with that. There it is again, the jab, repeatedly. That jab got in there good. That's the difference in the fight. Bumpus is carrying it because of that right jab as we're in the final seconds of round two. And what you said is true. He's most effective when he's on the inside, Jefferson. Over in Pat Jefferson's corner, they have words for him. Give me his, 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 give me his,
You're fighting good. You're letting him get off first a little bit, though, okay? So you just try to keep him off balance. Let's go across to Johnny Bumpus and his handlers. Yeah, high, just like you're doing, you know? When he fires, catch him. Come up the middle with your stuff, right? Okay. Nice deep breath. Okay. Round three. Come on, give me another. Hillary. George Fenton talking to him. Pat Jefferson. Round three, the referee, Joe Cortez. Johnny Bumpus, the southpaw, the red trunks, the right hand extended. Pat Jefferson, the white trunks, the left hand extended. George Benton gave Johnny Bumpus some very, very good advice. He just says, keep what you're doing, and he was right. And it's a real credit to Johnny Bumpus that George Benton flew in from Houston tonight because he's uh, in the camp for the heavyweight title fight with Cobb, and he's uh, a great trainer. Well, he practically got Leon Spinks the title from Muhammad Ali a few years ago. And he was, besides which, he was a good fighter, a great fighter. They all feared him in his division. I did many of his fights. Jefferson, the white trunks, Bumpus in red. Pat's protecting his eye a little now. You can see he's keeping his left hand up a lot higher. And he was told to do that by his trainer. Jefferson's making a fight of it, but at the moment... Bumpus is pulling away on points. His trainer told Pat to keep Johnny off balance, but I don't see how he can do that yeah, unless he gets on the inside. That jab and left hook, that jab and that right hook combination is great. And Jefferson is now starting to throw his punches in punches. Earlier he was throwing them one at a time like that one. But he's got to sustain an attack to get anywhere. The eye is getting worse. That's the left eye, by the way. And Pat looks so much smaller in there with Bumpus. He's very tall. Sugar Ray Robinson was uh, about that height, about six feet tall. But he was hurt then. And he's getting a little dirty, which is not right. They're getting mad at each other. If he gets dirty, he's going to get off balance, and maybe he'll get tagged. Johnny's left eye is cut. Yes, you can see the blood all over him. Yep, Jefferson is mad. He's really mad. And so is Bumpus, because he was hurt. Those kidney blows take their effect. Oh. Jefferson is now beating Bumpus to the punch, and there's a stream of blood coming from the left eye of Johnny Bumpus now. Jefferson's eye is swollen but not bleeding. Bumpus is bleeding around the left eye. And that could have been a butt. Jefferson really knows how to lock up his man. He holds and clinches beautifully. Final seconds of the round. There's the corner of Johnny Bumpus. They're going to have to work on that eye. It's not a bad cut. It's a very little cut. It's just a very little cut. Remember, man, Friday evening, he's such a good sight. Right here, he's hot. He's not running the mother. See, you're getting excited, you're going to run in the cup. Yes, sir. Referee is looking on. You got under control, you understand? Right? Cut man is Ace Marotta. The doctor is up there, too. I got him. Nothing, Doc. Yeah. Look at the tag, Lou. Yeah. They're concerned about that cut around the left eye of Johnny Bumpus. The doctor is looking at it now, Dr. Rogers. It is a bad cut, there's no question about it. Keep that jab going on. Don't go to the Make it miss that fire, you understand? It's hard to say who's talking in there. They're yelling at the doctor. They were yelling for the mouthpiece. Round four. Pat Jefferson may have a new lease on life now that Bumpus has to worry about a cut left eye. In their excitement in that corner, they forgot his mouthpiece, and that's what they were yelling about. But that can happen. It may be a different fight now. 
It was all Bumpus for three rounds, but for almost three rounds, and then Jefferson came back at the end of the third. Jefferson's fighting him exactly like I should, with quick, short rights. And that's what opened his eye. Or it could have been a butt, as you said earlier. And I think that Bumpus is now trying for a knockout. He's looking for that knockout punch instead of sticking to his style of opening him up with the jab. Well, see, he's trying for the knockout now. There's a one-two. A good one. And another. And that's a good observation because he knows this kid can hurt him. And he knows that eye can reopen. And that's right. And it is reopened. It's an angry cut. Bumpus is undefeated. 16 victories, no losses. Now that was off balance. That was off balance. The blood is coming down again from that left eye. And we've got a minute and a half to go in the round. Bumpus is in trouble from that. Bumpus knows he's in a fight. He's a rough boy from Rapid City. Jefferson is starting to punch shot Bumpus now. And his punch is hurt. Jefferson's eye, his left eye is swollen right. now, but not as bad as Bumpus' eye. And it's not bleeding, at least not right. yet. Somebody's going to leave himself open and get tagged with a lucky punch, Arthur. I just have a feeling. Well, that's what Jefferson's doing now. Pat's leaning forward. He's going to get tagged. He Less than a minute that. to go. You see the way he leaned over to his right and forward, and he gets tagged with that. With that powerful left. There goes Passing right hand there by Bumpus. Maybe he hurt him. They're over in Bumpus' corner. Jefferson trying to hold on. He's in a desperate straight there. Johnny's getting He's a little up. How much time left to go in the round? About 25 seconds. Johnny's getting too rough and too dirty now. He could clean it up. Jefferson trying to stay in there. He was hurt. Now he's coming back. But he comes back. Look at that. Bumpus is really mad. He really wants to end this, as you said earlier, Don. We're in the final seconds of round four of a ten-rounder. Been a bruiser. Here. Yeah, I gotta have that eye. Okay. Listen. Put slugging with. There's the shot that hurt uh, Pat Jefferson. That winging right hand. That right hand did it. See the pain. We're over in Jefferson's corner now. That's the uh, dangerous left eye. The referee goes over and takes a look at it. Here we go. Now there's, he missed with that left, he came across with that right hook, and that's the one that started it, and it really hurt Pat. Why don't you keep it something like that? All right, now, you, you okay now? Yeah. All right, now just settle down, right? All right, hold it down. See, but Johnny, don't the, uh, you still you working around that cut, around right? the left eye of now, Johnny Bumpus. Let's settle down. Come on, let's go, yeah. Come on, let's go, Okay, come on. Hey, let's go. Stay right there, get up. Now, let's go. All right, here we are, the halfway mark coming up. Round five of a fine ten round to put on by main event. Pat Jefferson in the white trunks. Johnny Bumpus in the red. Benton is a good second and trainer. He puts something that looked like a, a little a little harder material than uh, Vaseline, but it's, it has fallen off, and he's vulnerable again. Johnny Bumpus has gone back to his boxing style. He had, picking him off with the jab, and then uh, Pat Jefferson came in on him with an attack and changed all that. And the slugging started again. Uh, Johnny is really getting, he should be penalized because he's hitting on the break there several times, and it's not right. And, and Pat is annoyed about it. <laughs> Two minutes left in the round. Bumpus knows he's in a fight with Pat Jefferson. Jefferson still works the body whenever he can. There's that solid jab pecked in there again. He Jefferson throws everything was moving solid. away when that landed. He throws everything solidly. Good Bumpus. body shots by Jefferson. Bumpus has slowed down a bit. <laughs> Oh, 
Half the round is over. No sign of blood around the left eye of Bumpus, which is a good thing for him. Jefferson is going to the body because he must go to the body because he can't reach his head. He's so tall, but he did then. But most of his punches have been to the body. Pat can't reach him with his jab. He's too tall. Less than a minute to remaining in the round. A bit of a headlock by Jefferson didn't last long. The referee gets him apart. Bumpus comes in behind that right hand, but doesn't land this time. Again, the body shots by Jefferson. They could be throwing Bumpus down. Again, Bumpus has given all that he could on his punch power, but he doesn't seem to hurt him just once so far. Well, he was hurt last round. Well, Jefferson takes a deep breath as he comes off the ropes. Blocks that one. Pat's taking a lot of head punishment now. His eye is swelling rapidly. That's the left eye. Right jab got it again and again. 15 seconds left in the round. Another good round. Pat's got to get to the inside. He can't stay on the outside. He's tagged all the time. We're in the final seconds of the round. There's blood again from that left eye of Johnny Bumpus. Let's listen to the corners. We're in uh, Bumpus Corner. Ace Morata applying lotion to the cut. Like you behind him. You're doing all right, see? When you panic, you'll run into something. You understand? Just box like you know you can, right? All right, now you're doing a good, good job of it. Now keep your, keep your jab going. You understand, John? Yeah. Good and alert, right? Uh -huh. Let's go over to uh, Pat Jefferson. Jefferson. Okay. Step, walk on your right side and stop leading with the right hand so the body with your eye like that, you're right on his right side to cook. Don't lead with the right hand so the body... Good idea with... Leave with your jam. Don't leave with your like him. See this replay here. That was a great right which landed. That's what he has to do more often. You can't do it from the outside. Here's round six of this talking 10-rounder. At least it's scheduled that far. Johnny Bumpus in the red trunks from Clementon, New Jersey. Pat Jefferson in the white trunks from Rapid City, South Dakota. These boys are junior welterweights. In fact, Bumpus is the USBA junior welterweight champion. He wants the world's title. Coming at him with the jab, a good countering right hand. And Jefferson is told to keep the punches up, and the crowd does not like that. Comment by the referee. Bumpus pecking away with the right jab, trying to set his man up. Jefferson knows that. He's trying to get away from it. Uh, and he looks over at the referee. There's holding behind the neck a warning to Bumpus. Well, Bumpus has received several warnings, and he is fighting a 30 fight, as we noted before. Pat's corner, Pat's corner did tell him not to lead with the right and with the left, and he's listening. Good one-two by Jefferson there. Bumpus all over him again. Bumpus doesn't seem to have the power that he had in the earlier rounds. Jefferson is about the same. Well, he's probably a little discouraged because Pat's taking his best shots. And that's very discouraging for a fighter when you've got all your power in them and you can't make you can't make, can't do anything with it. Holding and heading by Bumpus again. Ace Marauder has done a great job with Johnny Bumpus' eyes. Oh, yes, There's no blood. Has, no question about it. Jefferson looks at the referee. He's unhappy about something. The referee talks to Bumpus, and we didn't know what it was. We're not lip readers. I think that Pat ought to let the referee do the refereeing, though, yes. because he's getting hurt. He's, he's losing claiming. his concentration. Sure. Less than a minute to go in the round. Every round is like the previous round. A real tough, good round. That has been a dull moment in the entire fight. What a great job they did on Pumpus' eye. No blood. Hope you didn't put the hex on him, Arthur. <laughs> oh, low blow. 
That was very low. Oh, bro, Jefferson is almost doubled over. He goes into the corner, and I wonder if the referee is going to give him time to recover. Well, this is the time, really, to uh, make the a point. The referee is talking to Jefferson. Jefferson was really hit low. We'll take a good look at the quick replay of the low blow. Here it is. All right, he came across with that right cross. Oh, in the oh no doubt about that one. Now, actually, something hey, should have been done there. Some points should have been taken away. Well, we'll see. He may at the end of the round. Well, he's permitted, according to the rules, a rest at the discretion of the referee, and he just did that. I understand that's only when he's floored. Uh, I don't know why he got that rest. No, that's permitted here in Jersey. Uh-huh. Yes, John. Jefferson comes into the attack and then runs into a punch. Bumpus went back to the corner with the eye, bleeding again. Listen to that shit. Okay, overhand rise to this motherfucker's eye. When you get Apparently the referee is not penalizing uh, Bumpus. He may he's going over to talk to him, however. He has not taken the round away from the marker, not well, yet. Anyway. Yeah, I know. Well, in order to control the fight, in order to control the fight, uh, something should be done soon, like otherwise it could go out of hand. Oh, he demands no, a good night. There's Ace Morata now taking care of Johnny Bumpus's cut. He's doing an excellent job with Luke Duva looking in and supervising. Any points that's come your way, you got some speed. Yep. The cut did reopen at the end of the round. Yes, it did. He didn't Don't admit that eye, bud. This Pat, real bad, guy. Pat Jefferson's got his oh, on him, placing ice. Looks better. Get inside, Alan, foot! Go inside! And it's round seven. Johnny Bumpus in the red trunks. Pat Jefferson in the white. It's a tough fight for both gladiators. Now, there's a big swab of Vaseline on Bumpus' left eye, but that'll be knocked off soon by a punch. In my unofficial opinion, Arthur, I think Bumpus built up a lead in the early rounds. Well, I'm with the early you, rounds in the first through the fourth, but uh, Jefferson gave a good account of himself in the third round. Now, I'm with you there, definitely. But we've got four rounds to go, seven, eight, nine, ten. Anybody's fight. The round's basis of scoring is what is used here in New Jersey. And Bumpus, as you said, should continue to do what he did early. He's still pecking away. But when you get tired, you can't do what your, your body can't do what your mind wants you to do. He's fighting with the jab again, but is wild with the left. Two minutes left in this round. Another quick round. Good body shots by Jefferson. We know All through the fight, he's worked on the body. We knew there would be some fierce competition here, and here it is. There might even be animosity for all we know. Bumpus scored heavily. He hurt Jefferson. Jefferson is trying to hold on. Let's see if Bumpus can find him again. He could win it here if he finds him. And what Johnny did then was allowed because he had one hand free and the referee came in to break them, but he did the right thing. Time running out in the round. One minute remaining. Jefferson seems to have righted himself. He was hurt. He was hit with a tremendous right hook then, and he was hurt. A good round for Bumpus, no question about that. He's tagging him now at will. Now Jefferson's in trouble. That, that was a little low again. Jefferson won for unfair tactics. A little bit more than half a minute to go in the round. Jefferson's in, in real trouble. And his eye is closing. He's hurt. The left Sorry. eye is closing. He's almost a sitting duck. He's wobbly. Bump is all over him. A half a minute to go. And that's Jefferson down. Three, four, five. He's on both knees. Six. He's wobbly as he gets up. He takes the mandatory eight count. We've got about 20 seconds to go in the round. Less than that. Bump is time for the knockout. And there is that's it. Jefferson that's all. driven it in the ropes. The fight is over. The winner is Johnny Bumpus by a knockout in the seventh round. Well, 
Pat wasn't really hurt. He looked at his corner for advice there when he was down, but he was hurt at the end. It is smart to stop that fight. Absolutely right. Jefferson's only hope was to reopen the cut around the eye of Bumpus, and not being tall enough, he couldn't reach the eye with his jab. I didn't mean that he was not hurt. He looked. He was fully conscious. He looked at his corner. He was fully aware. There's a knockdown. Now that took, followed by a grazing right. Jefferson is ready for the cleaners at this point, and down he goes wearily. And Bumpus were on the attack when he went down, he got up, and he went right, attacked him fast, and the referee came in and stopped it very appropriately at yes, this time. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. But both of these men deserve a lot of credit. The time, two minutes and 51 seconds of the seventh round, unofficially. We'll get the official time from Ed Darry, and there's a very happy Lou Duva. Scott Frank is fighter one, and now Johnny Bumpus is fighter one. That was a very good fight for a televiewer to watch because it had all the excitement. And yet, uh, even though uh, Bumpus seemed to be winning the fight every so often, Jefferson would come back and take the play away, and the vital factor was, it made it so interesting, that uh, Bumpus had to survive that cut left eye, and that could have gotten worse instead of better. And you're complimenting Ace Morato, who deserves a lot of credit. Yeah. I'm looking over. man. I'm sorry, Don. I'm looking over at Pat now, Jefferson. He's crying like a... He's oh. too bad. He's a valiant, uh, great sportsman. And uh, I, I really uh, thought the fight uh, was in... Bumpus had uh, control of this fight all the way. And there was no question, in my mind, how it was going. I thought that Bumpus d did, however, and I must repeat, did fight a little dirty. But that's the referee's business to take care of that. And now the official announcement. Ring announcer, Ed Darian. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Cortez stops this bout at 2 minutes and 51 seconds of the seventh round, and a winner by a TKO, and still undefeated, Johnny Bump City Bumpus. Johnny Bumpus, Bumpus scoring his 12th knockout in 17 fights, and he's still undefeated. They shake hands. A real fine performance by Johnny Bumpus and a courageous performance by Pat Jefferson. And I, uh, it, uh, I was asked by one of the corner men how I had it, but believe me, I, I had Johnny Bumpus. If I were refereeing that fight, I'm not going to say just how I had it, but I had him in a comfortable lead. Well, I had it five out of six. I gave Jefferson the third round and all the others to Bumpus. Yeah, well, we had it the same way, Don. I guess by this time we should know how to score a fight, right, Don? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> Also, WBC Super Championship. Johnny Bumpus in the red trunks. Here's the knockdown. You can see how weary uh, Pat Jefferson is as he retreats to the ropes. But he can retreat no more with those ropes there. And you can see that there it Bumpus is. was determined. He wasn't hit down by any one particular punch. It was an accumulation of punches and weariness on the part of the fighter. Yeah, and this is why I said before that he was aware of what was going on. He wasn't really hurt that badly. Well, he wasn't knocked out in the in the uh, particular term, and yet they're going to call this a technical knockout. And I believe when the referee stops the fight to save a man from further punishment, it is not a technical knockout in my book. It is a knockout. Well, according to the rule book, Don, when a man is knocked out, you have to count ten over him. This is why they call it a TKO. And I think that's misleading when you read the records of fighters. Uh, I mean, this man was knocked out, period. Well, it they're they're going to call it a TKO, and people can say, oh, he was cut. Let's go over to Dick Landis for what should be a very good interview with the winner. Okay, Don, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let me say something right from the top before I talk with Johnny here. I think we have to take our hat off to Pat Jefferson. He hung in there. He was wily, foxy. He was a smart fighter. And he has, he came in when he turned pro, he had over 270-some amateur fights. Of course, this guy has had more than 350 amateur fights. Let's clarify something right from the top, Johnny. They may say that you fought a little dirty in that fight. I don't think it's so much deliberate dirtiness as much as you got cut in the third and you got a little over anxious, a little overzealous, and you wanted to get back in the fight and take care of that cut eye. Right. Uh, like you say, when I when I seen the blood coming into my eye, I got, you know, a little nervous thinking that they might stop the fight before the cut. So I got over anxious, like you said, and 
uh, dirty. I don't understand what you were saying was dirty. The man was pulling my head down, and I was continuing to punch while on the inside. And every time I was punching, I was still punching while he was holding me. And he would start crying, and then the referee would, you know, pull us apart. But other than that, I don't feel I fought dirty. Let's take a look at the replay over here, Johnny. There should be a better word than dirty, I guess, but uh, here we go. Give me a little play-by-play. -play. Okay, right before I started moving in, I had caught him with a good right hook to the body, and I knew he was hurt. He started grabbing on, so I just started unloading, like the, the, the uh, left uppercut, what, what sent him down the right hook. But I think he was hurt from that, uh, that body shot the most. Mm -hmm. Well, he hung in there, and uh, I guess he kind of surprised you a little bit, right? He's unranked? Uh, well, I, I had knew Pat was a pretty good fighter from the amateurs. We've been around a lot, although we never met. Uh, as far as surprise, I wasn't very surprised because I was, you know, ready for any fight that he could bring to me. Uh, the only shot he got in was one looping right hand, which I think is the one that uh, opened the eye. Now there's Aaron Pryor, really your ranked third. There really is no one left in your division to fight other than to fight somebody like Pryor. We talked about this before the fight, but give me some more thoughts on it. Well, I feel that uh, Pryor, I, I am ready for Pryor, and I'm ready for Leroy Haley tomorrow. Uh, I feel that either one that I face, I will become, a, I will become the uh, junior welterweight world champion, whether it be Pryor or Haley. You know, you're one of the quickest guys I have ever seen in the ring. Right. Uh, I credit my hand speed. Uh, I didn't get my jab off as effective as I felt like I should have tonight, but uh, the jab that I did use, it helped me to win the fight. And hats off to Ace Murata, right? One of the greatest cut men going. Right. Ace Murata, he, he, I got cut once in my fifth fight over my other eye, and he did tremendous work on it. And I also like to say hello to my family back in Tacoma and Seattle, Washington, and also my family and friends in Nashville, and of course, Clementon. You know, I'm going to say something. Announcers aren't supposed to do this, I guess, but I think you will be a world champion, and your speed is going to do it for you. And I congratulate you for your fight tonight. Thank you very much. Stay right here a minute, because I want to lead in.